Today we are going to discuss a piece of poetry that raises a lot of important questions and issues. How would you feel if you are locked or confined within four walls? When you are not allowed to go out, when you are not allowed to do things that you enjoy doing? Angry? Frustrated? Here is a poem that explores how someone feels when he is locked within four walls. So let's read the poem, A Tiger in the Zoo. Let's go through the first stanza of the poem. A tiger in the zoo. He stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage, on pads of velvet quiet, in his quiet rage. So who is he here? It's the tiger. And where is this tiger? From the word cage, we guess that probably he's in a zoo. Look at the highlighted phrases, vivid stripes, paths of velvet quiet. What are they describing? Vivid stripes describe the bright and beautiful black and orange stripes of the tiger. You can, you can make that out from the picture given below. And paths of velvet refers to the paws of the tiger. Strong, but the fur is velvety and soft. So what is the tiger doing in these lines? He is pacing or walking up and down in the cage. And on pads of velvet quiet suggests that he is walking quietly in the cage. So do you think he gets enough space to move around in the cage? The phrase few steps indicate that the tiger is confined in a small space or the cage is very small. Let's read the last line once again. In his quiet rage. What does this line tell us? It tells us about how the tiger is feeling while locked inside a cage. Rage suggests extreme anger. And quiet rage is an interesting combination of words. So, on the face of it, the tiger looks quiet. However, he is extremely angry from within. Interestingly, the poet uses the word stalk to describe his walk. What does the word stalk mean? It means to follow an animal or a person quietly or secretly without being seen or heard with an intention to catch it or kill it. So stalk here describes the natural behavior of a tiger. He stalks his prey with an intention to catch it. But he cannot really do that when he's locked inside a cage. So the word stalk here creates a sense of irony. Let's see what the tiger is doing in the next stanza. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where plum deer pass. So here the poet describes what the tiger should be doing in his natural habitat. Habitat means the natural home for an animal or a plant. Now look at these highlighted words, lurking and sliding. They suggest what the tiger should be doing. So lurking means to wait or move without being seen with an intention to attack. And sliding here describes the swift movement of the tiger trying to chase his prey. And who is the prey here? It's the plum or fat deer whom the tiger spots near a water hole. Now water hole could be a pond or a lake in a forest. So in this stanza, the poet describes what the tiger should be doing out in the jungle. He should be lurking in the shadows, ready to attack his prey. The picture here also, in a way, depicts the tiger lurking in the shadows, waiting for his prey. Now let's look at the third stanza. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. So the third stanza once again talks about 
what the tiger should be doing instead of being locked up in a cage. Now let's see what these words mean. Snarling. It means to make a deep rough sound while showing the teeth. You can see a tiger snarling in the picture here. Bearing means showing and fangs means long and sharp teeth. So the, so the poet says the tiger should be out walking around the edge of the forest, frightening people by showing his white teeth. Well, whether you like it or not, this is how a tiger should naturally behave. Tiger is a predator. So it is natural for him to go out and hunt or attack. So in this stanza, the poet refers to the people living in the villages at the edge of the forest. And had the tiger been out, he would have been spotted there, frightening people with the sharp white teeth and claws. Now let's read the next stanza. But he's locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. So once again, the focus is on the tiger who is locked in the cage. The poet describes the cage as concrete cell. That is, it is made of concrete. And what is concrete? It's the building material prepared by mixing cement, stones, sand and water. So once this concrete hardens, it's very difficult to break it down. Look at the next line closely. His strength behind bars. So this suggests that since the tiger is in captivity and it's not possible for him to break out of the cage made of concrete, he's unable to exhibit or show his strength. And that is why the phrase strength behind bars, which describes his helplessness. And he ends up walking up and down the cage. Because he can't attack or hunt, he ignores the visitors or people who come to see him at the zoo. Now let's see what the last stanza is about. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. So once again, it describes what the tiger does when he is in confinement. It shows how a day in the life of a tiger caged in a zoo ends. He listens to the sounds around him. In this case, the patrolling cars. Now these could be the cars of police patrolling the area or could be the zookeepers patrolling the zoo to ensure the animals are in their cages. Now let's read the last two lines one more time and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Now look at the repetition of the word brilliant here. Perhaps the poet wants to establish a connection between the shining stars and the tiger's eye, which shines brightly in the dark. And he sits helplessly in the cage as he stares at the night sky, perhaps longing for his freedom. Now let us go through the poetic devices used in the poem. Did you notice the use of the word he for the tiger instead of it? So the poet has used personification here. Now what is personification? It is when you give an animal or object qualities or abilities that only a human can have. That is called personification. So perhaps the poet has used personification to help the reader relate with the plight or the pain of the tiger. You will notice that the words highlighted in the same color here rhyme with each other. So stripes does not have a rhyming word, but cage has a rhyming word. It rhymes with rage and quite too doesn't have a word rhyming with it in this stanza. So if we label each sound with different letters, we can determine the rhyme scheme of this poem. So stripes can be labeled as A. Cage and rage can be labeled as B and quiet can be labeled as C and the, and the rhyme scheme that we'll get would be A, B, C, B. 
and this rhyme scheme runs through the whole poem. And what does the rhyme scheme do? It lends a lyrical quality to the poem. Another poetic device used here is imagery. So, what's imagery? It's the use of words in a way that creates picture in the mind of the reader. So, if you look at the uh, first stanza, here the use of words uh, help, uh, help us imagine the appearance of the tiger. In the second stanza, the description helps us imagine the movement of the tiger. And, and, and in the third stanza, the description helps us imagine the action of the tiger. So all these descriptions create a certain image or picture in our mind as we read these. And if you look at the highlighted letters carefully here, you can guess the poetic device used here. So sh, sh in should and shadow, the same sound is repeated in the same line. And p sound in the last line in plum and pause. So the poetic device used here is alliteration. Another poetic device used by the poet in this poem is metaphor. Now a metaphor is used to make a comparison between two things that are quite different but do have something in common. In a way, when you use a metaphor, one thing represents the other. So in stanza one, pads of velvet represent the paws of the tiger where the softness of the velvet is compared with the softness of the paws of the tiger. Now look at this phrase, quiet rage. Can you guess the poetic device used here? It's oxymoron. Now what's oxymoron? When two words with opposite meaning are put together to create a certain effect, it's an example of oxymoron. And what effect does quiet rage create here? Here, it represents the suppressed anger of the tiger. So, the poem A Tiger in the Zoo makes us raise a lot of important questions. It questions the relevance of zoos. Do we need them for the conservation of wildlife? Are there other ways to save the wildlife without putting them behind the bars? It also makes us, makes us think. While we enjoy looking at the animals in the zoo, the animals don't really share our feelings. They are unhappy in confinement. The poem also reminds us what these animals should be doing in their natural habitat rather than walking up and down in a cage. Thanks for watching our video. If you found this useful, then don't forget to like it and do subscribe to our channel to get more updates. In case you have any questions or any suggestions, then do drop them in the comments below.